Hello everybody, it's Cedric and CJ here at CRWC and today we will be reviewing NWA Power as of July 25th. So, look, this the thing I like about, I like about NWA is that it opens up with matches, sometimes some, some, some promos or interviews, but that's all right, that's good. You know, wrestling needs that stuff. Um, but the way NWA starts, it makes you feel like you've missed something already. Mm-hmm. You know, but... You know, hey, jump right into the action, right? That's what we're going to do. So it opens up with, they said damage on the screen, damage versus Jax Dane, but it was Carnage. Yeah. The guy formerly known as Marche Rocket. And I'll be honest with you, ever since undertaking the masked role and working with Aaron Stevens, and his partner, uh, Damage, mm-hmm. uh, respectfully Damage, his, his skill has picked up a lot. Yeah, it's a lot better than when he was under the, the other moniker. Yep, so this is good. It's helping him and whatnot. Um, so this, this, this match, is, it's a Jax Dane type match, and I could tell that Jax called this match. Um, so look, um, I could go a little bit blow by blow because it was a good match. It was. I don't know exactly what people want out there, but um, it's good to let me know if you want me to go almost blow by blow or just the most kind of poignant spots of the match or whatnot. But this here, it was a good match. Both of them showed their power. Both were showing their agility. They, I mean, just two large dudes. I think the ring is a little too small. Yeah. It's a little too small. They it's, both had their managers out there, too. Yeah, it's like, um, it seems to be almost a 16 by 16 ring. It's, it's I don't think it's good enough to hold these two titans, most of the heavyweights at, in general. Yeah. However, it's a good size enough ring that keeps any action of uh, running from rope to rope close, so it doesn't take forever. So that's that's a positive. But uh, this match, it was going all right until, um, you know, Jax countered with a Samoan drop, and then Aaron Stevens distracts him by, uh, you know, grabbing the leg, get him outside, use a loaded glove, and I mean. Jack's day is a, the ref is counting them out. Jack slowly recovers and, and look, it looked like a knockout shot. It did. You know, they did really good, like a knockout shot. He slowly recovers and during the ref's count, Jack could hear the commentary of Tim Storm. He was saying that, uh, you know, he's never seen Jack look so weak. Mm-hmm. And, and that got his attention long enough and the referee counted him out. Carnage won via count out. And Jax was eyeballing Tim Storm. Yep. Tim Storm started eyeballing him. And when they came back, Tim was like, look, I'm, I'm doing commentary. That's my job. You know, that's what I'm going to keep doing. You know, Anything he, he, between me and him is history. Yep, and that's where I want to keep it, history. I'm like, all right. But there's some history that don't want to stay in the past. Mm-hmm. This is true. Just because that's where you want it, it has to be mutually assured to stay there. So next we get Knox and Murdoch versus the Alpha Kings. That's a pretty good even match. Then the Alpha King, they started building heat on Murdoch. Murdoch counters and starts building heat with um, some crazy overhead chops to the back. Mm-hmm. They were loud. They were wonderful. And you can't comfort them. It's just mean. More folks should chop the back. <laughs> um, the Crockett Cup winners... Whew. They uh started making quick tags, doing double team moves. It looked good. It looked right. Um, and they started taking absolute control. Murder, I hit a pop up power bomb for a two count due to a save. Then they hit their finisher, the high low lariats, and you know they got the win with that. But I wrote that the Alpha Kings looked pretty good, and the Crockett Cup winners showed why they won it all. Next, we get Blake Troop versus Big Strong Mims. I knew already who was going to win and lose this. Yeah, me too. I, but I was curious as to how. The how 
tells a lot. You can see the ingredients of backstageness in the how and how things are conducted. Um, it wasn't a squash match. No, it wasn't. It was highly competitive. Mm-hmm. Um, Troop comes in with damage ribs from a MMA tournament that he placed the silver in. Well, that's what was reported there. Yeah. <sighs> Just yawning. <laughs> it's late, y'all. It's 1.17 a.m. But I yawn when I do commentary anyway. And I just don't get it. I just don't get it. Um, but in any case, uh, Mims, he used, this was kind of early on, he used a long-winded airplane spin. And I mean, he just kept them up that the crowd should have counted. Yeah. But then when he put them down, they were off balance for a while. But then he hit Troop for a close, with a clothesline for a one count, which was all right. Which is all right. Troop grapples with a figure four. And it was nice. He grapples it to a figure four. And, you know, uh, Mims got to the ropes. And I don't know. The ref was counting. He seemed a little lenient, but he, you know, it was almost a DQ. Almost got to that five count. I don't know. Mim fought back. He applied a bear hug, which is a good thing to do. Mm-hmm. Um, shoving him into each corner. He got he shoved him into three different corners. But then Troop breaks the hole with a face rake, which was just dirty. And it was a good looking one, too. But then he applied the figure four again. Mims, he was showing great heart, trying to fight the pain. But ultimately, he gave out. And the referee had to stop it because he couldn't fight back intelligi- intelligently. So he didn't come back, fight back at all. He was just laid out. Yeah, he was just out, and, and then Troop he tried to you know taunt at the end of the match, but he was in too much pain. So you know he sold it well like that, and that's pretty good. But then again, that might have been some legit to it. I think Mims called this match. What? So I think Mims called this match. You think so? Mm-hmm. Mm. Mm. Troop didn't wrestle like he did before. Um, you know, but he's still making a slow transition. And Mims could have been the one. Yeah, I, you're right. I think he did call it, too. I'm going to agree with that. I'm going to agree with that. Only Mims and Troop truly know. Yeah. But if Troop is really transitioning and Mims has been resting a lot longer than him, then Mims would have to call it. Um, then we got Odison and Jordan Clearwater versus the United States Tag Team Champions, the Country Gentlemen, AJ Kazana and Anthony Andrews, but it's non-title. Mm-hmm. It was a good match. Yeah. Um, Odison and Jordan got great heat on Kazana. Kazana places the match fully in his control until he leaps from the top and he's caught by a lifter from Odison. And I mean, it was a nice lift, yeah, European uppercut. Odison got a ground pounce on, on Anthony Andrews and he got the pin. And it's like, you know, it's shocking because these are your u.s tag champions but then not shocking seeing that he's gotten wins over them with other partners before i think one was with uh i can't remember who it was but they were their tag team name was the end and then it was a singles match where he got a uh, win over one of them so otis has got history beating them and this is his third time so it makes you wonder if they're going to do something but at the end of the match jordan clearwater wanted to get you know some some love and otis is like no nah. No, and just left. I think he's trying to stay away from the tag team. He wants to be a, I think he wants to be a singles yeah competitor. So he don't want to get all wrapped up with someone. I I don't blame him. I don't I don't blame him at all. You know that singles. I mean, you know the national championship is up for, for up for grabs. Uh, either later, either later this week or next week on Tuesday. Um. The TV title, that's still in, in operations and stuff under Tom Latimer. He's the champion. Mm-hmm. You know, you, you don't want to just throw these single opportunities away. Especially if you're going to be going after Tyrus, you know. And I think they're going to remove the belt from Tyrus. I think they're going to do that. I think so, too. You know, Tyrus, I like him for the most part. You know, I don't have the baggage that others do seeing how he was in WWE and how he was used there. And that's what people have to remember. It's not like these people come in and say, this is what I want to do. This is what I want to be. 
you know, they might have that idea, but then when the boss tells you, I got this idea and I want to see if you can get it over. And if you don't like this idea, then you can walk. They got to do it. That's big bucks. That's big time that people get to see you. So, you know, people got to remember a lot of these, like whatever he was doing in WWE, there's a chance that that wasn't even Tyrus's desire, you know, not even his desire. So just take that, you know, with a little bit of wisdom, you know, you just don't know. And then if there's some interview out there where Tyrus is like, yeah, that was my idea and I thought it would work. And I'd be like, okay, well, that was his idea and it sucked, Mm -hmm. you know, but right now. I don't see him as a failure. I, I, he's a good, sizable champion. Very hard to beat. He had a match with Chris Masters that I haven't seen that they raved about. I hope it's not false advertisement on that raving. Um, you know, so, I mean, because anyone that's spoken to us in, in a comment section about Tyrus being just weak, wishy-washy, embarrassing and all that, you know, I can't even disagree with them. I can only go on what I've seen so far, you know, so I say if somebody wants to try to rebrand themselves and be better than what they were before. They should be allowed to. Yeah, give them the chance. I mean, when you think about it, wouldn't you want that same chance? So extend the same courtesy you'd want others to give you to, to other people. At least give them a chance. You know, that's that's what I'm saying. Look at AEW. They've had four years of suckism until the past three months, and it's only on collision. You know, and that's that's, that's just recent in the past, what, month? Yeah. So they got collision going for them. Ring of Honor is, eh, but that's about it. I mean, Ring of Honor is better than, than, than Dynamite and Rampage. Yes. And still it's got its flaws, you know. And when Tony Khan stops booking, that flaw will be gone. But <laughs> we're going to get to the NWA World Junior Heavyweight title match, which is Matt Vine, who's been a heel the past showing that we saw of him, versus Kerry Morton, who's turned heel the last, I'll say three showings that we saw of him. Mm-hmm. But Matt Vine comes in, and he's, well, he's normally working with uh, the fixers. Yeah, although they're not letting him really do anything yet. They're pretty much treating him like trash. Yeah. So this was odd because Matt Vine was working like a serious baby face. And he showed a lot of baby face moves, arm drags, hip tosses, drop kicks, and, and getting the crowd behind him. Morton was shutting them down uh, with repeated kicks to the legs and working them working his legs on the apron and the ring, not the ring post, but on the ropes, you know, low kicks, you know, stomps. He was, he was, he was working them legs. Mm-hmm. Um, Morton was in control of the match with lifters in the corner and some, you know, he, he, he was hitting them really stiff looking at least. Well, I mean, they weren't the best looking European uppercuts, but you know, he was trying to lay them in, trying to look good. So I like the effort. I at least like the effort, but he's got to, he's got to tighten up on some of that though. Uh, Vine makes a comeback and he lands a nice Samoan slam for a, a two count. Morton calls for a timeout, which I just kind of had to chuckle at that. Cause you know, there's no timeouts in wrestling. Mm-hmm. You no, know, that's just the old classic heel thing right there. His dad taught him that. And, uh, then Morton yanks the, he yanks Vine's throat over the top rope. And then he uses that stagger for a knee strike to the face and then, uh, Let's say big shows like showstopper move, but it's like you know the inverted headlock into an elbow drop to the neck or upper chest area. Oh, okay, you know, um, he used that to get the three count and retain his title, and it was a good match. It was yeah. this episode of NWA Power was really good. It was really good. I, I think people ought to be watching NWA more. Um, I would like to watch Impact. It's just so lonely it's it's weird their audience dwarfs nwa's audience in uh, in the arena they're not doing a studio nwa studio but although nwa studio it don't feel studio impact feels studio (laughs) it feels lonely they've got 
a lot of amazing talent, polished talent Impact does. But it just feels so lonely. I feel bad for them. And I shouldn't pity a federation of any kind, but man, it's like when I watched Impact, I want Cedra up here so I don't feel so by myself. I'm serious. So I, you know, if anyone out there listening, you know, let me know how I could, you know, alleviate that loneliness when watching Impact. And and, and, and I wonder, do y'all feel that way too when watching Impact? You know, it's, it shied me away from watching it. You know, they, I want to see Alex Shelley as champion, if he's still champion. So I might check out an episode, just one of the most recent ones. I don't know. But for everyone out there, you know, we're on Spreaker. You can go down to podcast and see that because this is all, obviously is going to be on YouTube. Um, so please check us out on Spreaker. Sign up. It's free. And make sure you follow, follow us there on Spreaker. And uh, with that, Y'all be good, be safe, stay chill, especially in these record heat waves, and we'll see you next time.